thanks so much hey. for taking the time to do this interview. How has your first day been so far? Tired, but good. Mm -hmm. You know, I woke up at 4 a.m. and started making myself pretty. I was already in the morning TV in the morning. So, yeah, a bit tired. Otherwise, good. So you're releasing the new Lordy album, Scream Writers Guild, and it's it's coming out in some days. Uh, how are you feeling about the upcoming release? It's also a new label, so it must be pretty exciting for you. Yeah, as always. I mean, well, as for the album itself, I mean, I always I'm I'm one of those guys. I I honestly think that it is the best album so far. Mm -hmm. Until the next one comes along, and that's how I really, truly, honestly, honestly feel. Like every time, um, yeah. So far, so good with the new label and everything. Um, yeah, can't really complain about anything at yeah. the moment. Yet I'm sure I will complain about something later on, but not <laughs> right now. Everything's good. Yeah, when you released the uh, the previous work, was there any complaints afterwards as well that you had? Oh, you mean with 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 with, uh, with Lord University? The, the, the yeah. Mm, no, not really. I'm I'm just I uh, I don't know. I I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know even know know what I'm babbling about. about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, the new album's title is a wordplay on the infamous Screenwriters Guild, which is an yes association of screenwriters in hollywood so um were you already familiar before that uh while going into this album and what do you find so fascinating about that in general well the the title of the album is the is the last thing that i came up with of the whole process that was the last thing i just needed something that would somehow wrap up the whole theme of the songs which i knew well obviously knew because they were already done at that point uh they are all but one of the songs on the album are somehow inspired by by some existing horror movies or horror movies you know characters and uh yeah i'm going now i'm kind of like going backward backwards in time about that so so um i forgot your question by the way <laughs> hmm. uh, what you find so fascinating about the screenwriters guild I needed I needed a, a title that I could you know play the words around with I needed to combine horror somehow with Hollywood or film or cinema somehow that's what I was I, I had plenty of different you know um, uh, 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 suggestions you know, there and and Scream Writers Guild. It could have also been Scream Actors Guild. Mm -hmm. It could have been, I I, what, I I had some like Cinemassacre or something I had, uh, you know, this kind of, but I think Scream Writers Guild has a has a nice ring to it because you only need to change one letter. And and yeah. the less the letters you need to change, the better. But Cinemassacre would have been also pretty good. Yeah, well, that's also a good name for a song for for the future, yeah. maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but you mentioned, well, going back to what you mentioned during the last question, um, that you came up with the title last. Um, yeah. Did you have because this album it doesn't have a strong concept, but the songs are all related to to horror movies, Obviously, yeah. one way or another. Um, so how did you come about with all the songs and the stories in that sense? Well, I always write the music first and then I come up with the lyrics later on. That's how I always do. I mean, there are some exceptions to the rule, like rarely. Um, but um, I don't know. Because, I mean, there, there aren't that many different angles of views that it, you can look at the whole horror genre from. You know, there aren't. I mean, I mean, well, technically, this is our 18th album already. So I've kind of touched base with every imaginable horror thing in the lyrics already so so it's i just you know thought that okay and and, and of course you know referring to horror movies or or you know, horror cinema or you know th that's no new new it's not a new thing to us you know mm -hmm. i mean there's quite a lot of those like evil dead references and, and uh, stuff like that before but i just 
Well, I'm a movie geek. I'm a movie freak. You know, I I I, I love all kinds of movies except for musicals, which I fucking hate, which <laughs> are you know satanic and 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 yeah. should be banned. <laughs> And uh, but everything else from documentaries to chick flicks to fucking whatever, you know, you know, ch- children animation to to horror to whatever, you know, drama. I like everything. So so I yeah. just thought, that, wh- how about I'll just try to, you know, put them loosely inside Hollywood in a way that they, it's all about cinema. I already forgot your question, by the way. Uh, me too. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Um, but for the sake of my generation, I sort of have to ask this since you're you, you claim that you like all movies, but do you also enjoy like a film like Mean Girls? I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember if I've seen Mean Girls. I know the title, um, but I like like I mean, there's not a genre that I wouldn't like. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. It's a good yeah. movie. No, no matter what it is about, if it's a good movie and it's well done, if the story works, I like the movie. If I, I'm going to be entertained, even if I wouldn't, you know, like the sus- subject per se. I mean, there are good examples, like like some sport movies. I hate sports. I hate watching. I'm not interested in one tiny fucking bit about any kind of sports. But there are good, you know, sports movies that I've been, you know, enjoying. So I don't remember have I seen Mean Girls, but I, I like like yeah all kinds of movies really. Yeah, I mean, really, really, I I like like. <laughs> Really, I like like romantic comedies. I like I like uh, everything. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's good. We but, but the same thing with music. I mean, I mean, yeah. a good song is a good song. It doesn't matter what genre or how it is arranged. Yeah. But then again, you know, there of course there are exceptions to the rule. There is like in film, there's one genre that is automatically just like like shit for me, and it doesn't work. Is musicals in music? There's rap, hip hop that does the same. So I guess that's two things we will never, ever find in a Lordy song, which is rapping no. and or like musical. Musically, musical, like movie musical. I could do a song or, you know, music like that, but I would ne- that that's where it gets, you know, to my nerves. And that's what I had the film, you know, when when, you know, when you're t- trying to tell a story or as a viewer, you're trying to follow a story. And then all of a sudden, like, hey, how are you doing? And then everybody starts fucking <laughs> dancing and you know, doing shit. It's just like, like, it's such a cold shower. It's a buckets of cold water to your fucking face in the, just when you're into the story. Because when I watch a movie, I want to get sucked in and I believe that I, I'm, I'm inside the story there. And then, I mean, it has never happened to me in real life that somebody was, you know, should start singing all of a sudden, hello, how are you? We should go and have a smoke. Never happened to me. I don't know if it's just me, but it's just like really <laughs> throws me off from the from the. Okay, well, that's enough of that. Yeah. I hate <laughs> well, going back to the new record, um, well, the previous album consisted of seven albums. Um, so I was wondering, how was it for you? I know that your process in everything is sort of the same. So maybe there was no difference to this. But how was it for you to just go back to one album? Did you have a hard Easy. time picking all the songs for it? Because I know you always write too much. Yeah, I, I usually write too much. And they're, they're, yeah, and I wrote too much again. Yeah, there are a few songs that were left out, or left out, and but this was really easy process. I mean, because I, 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 uh, I was doing what I at least I, I didn't have to practice doing, you know, writing this kind of stuff because it's like I try to do songs that are really classic Lordy, really, you know, hooky eighties orientated, like really like in the vein of the first three or four albums, whatever, you know, something like that. That that was my goal, and. It's easy. I I know how to do a classic Lordy album. I know how to write that kind of classic Lordy stuff, you know. So it was easy. It felt natural. I didn't really have to scratch my head at all with any of the songs. It really natural process and fast. Now, the album is also structured a little bit like an award show. Um, And that's something I think you also used for the first time maybe in was it Lord Diversity that you made it like a rec, uh, a radio thing or was it collection? Oh, the collection was the radio show, yeah. 
but then yeah we i mean there, there are there are we have things like that in the past too with the with the scgs the Arctic circle gathering beats or as i like to call them the radio theater beats we have them mm. on pretty much every album more or less but this time it felt more suitable that we have like two of these radio radio theater beats there like in the beginning introducing them it's kind of like an 80s 80s uh cable horror show mm -hmm. that is being introduced and you know la, 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 and then later on it's like the it's not oscars it's oscar arctic awards because it's lordy so mm -hmm. so and there's that so it kind of like wraps it up but also there's more of these bits and pieces of like this little little uh cinematic sounding horror you know scores there between the songs and shit, shit like that uh i guess there's more this time than usual but I was just listening to the Spooky Sexual Vaganza Spectacular album from the from the Lord University, and it has movie references between each and every song. There's like there's a lot of those, like Kremlins and ET and Predator and Elm Street and Evil Dead, and you know there's all this. I love doing those. I, I mean, because, and and they don't. I like those because they add something without taking anything away. From yeah. Song, but that so much, even though I I did did see some review that about the new album. Oh, there are these bits and pieces they should have left them out. They are fucking boring. Well, then again, <laughs> on the next re next next review, there's some. Oh, these are the best parts of the whole album. So, eh, well, what do you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, do you actually also write scripts for these, or is it like do you come up with them more impromptu? No, I actually do write scripts. Yeah, I do. So then, like, let's pick out a, a couple of the songs. So the the album opens with "Dead Again, Jane." Um, who is Jane? This this lyric is a fictional, uh, horror story of an actual person who once lived. So there was the movie starlet actress called mm -hmm. uh, 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 Jane Mansfield, who was like a rivalry to to Marilyn Monroe. What, what is it, 40s 50s or something and this jane character was like really copycatting everything that marilyn was doing and and i remember that marilyn didn't really like that you know that that there was the other other blonde chick was who really really tried to be as sexy and really tried to do everything you know in the vein of marilyn okay and then when marilyn died uh, funnily enough also jane mansfield died like a few months later or something and this is where uh, this is all real this is where it gets a little bit, you know, not so sure if it's conspiracies or, but, but if you, you know, the internet is full of these things. But it is said that when she died in a car crash, her head was cut off and her boyfriend was Anton Levy, the, the, the guy who started this Church of Satan. So there's a lot of fucking, you know, uh, conspiracy theories about that, that. Her head was stolen and used in rituals and la, 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 la. And this is where the whole Lordy world comes world comes into this 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 head is called Reanimator. And I wanted to think that what if there is would be a fan of Chain Man's build in the 50s or whatever and would be a reanimator and just actually go and dig the the body and the head of the starlet and put it together and don't mind how he does it, but he knows how to reanimate people and he does. But the problem is that this 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 new girlfriend that she just put together keeps dying. It mm -hmm. just I mean, she's reanimated and then she dies immediately. And this poor guy is trying everything he can to you know just bringing her her back. You know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a cool story, actually. I don't know. I mean, the, 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 the music video for that is going to come out in 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 well. It's next week. It's on the day of the release. We just shot it, as you know. And uh, yeah, it's it's actually the story. This is one of the few times that the story is more or less now also, you know, visually displayed in the video. Yeah, cool. Looking forward to see that, uh, the ready results. So next we week. We don't have the car crash, though. We didn't have the budget for that. <laughs>
<laughs> well, you know, you can always do off screen things like that's also really interesting, I guess, in film. Anyway. And you can always show the band at that moment when something yeah. happens to the lyrics <laughs> that you really don't have the budget for. So then exactly. just show, show the guitar player's fingers at that moment. Yeah. Um, now, some of the intros uh, on this record, like, for instance, Lucifer Prime Evil, it has very cinematic intro as well. So and it feels also very nostalgic or like vintage. Mm -hmm. Um, but what about your favorite horror movie soundtracks? Like, did you did you listen to any if you like before in general composing? Do you listen to a lot of those? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well. I I think for me, I mean, obviously there there are these classics that are classics for a reason, and and you when you talk about classic scores in movies or anything, you really don't know anymore that are uh, uh, do you dig them because they're classics or do you dig them for their actual you know credit so why but my favorite like like um inspiration for not only for this album like these little scores but also for the original Skarktic Circle gathering, the beginning of Gets Heavy. By the way, I have never told this to anybody. Anybody, any, anybody never asked about this before. Is Army of Darkness, Evil Dead, two, Evil Dead 3. That 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 score is 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 a CD that I was listening like right next to my kiss and whatever stone it is you know i i love that score so i was listening to the fucking i love that song let's go so that would definitely be one of the did i listen to any anything else while writing no not really it's just you know i i i have something in my head and i try to just you know yeah, well, yeah. it's actually interesting that nobody asked you that before because nobody like, has ever asked me. And I, 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 it's the, it's the, <laughs> the original Scottish Circle gather, gathering uh, the 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 melody and the whole theme. It starts with with my my, you know, being a fanboy of the Army of Darkness theme. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I also read that the last track and credits is very personal to you, and that you mm -hmm. wrote it for your own funeral. So yes. How difficult is it to write a song for your own funeral? Very easy. Not, I mean, very easy because I mean you don't even have to think about the lyrics that much because you, I mean, you know already what you're going to write, and uh, it has uh, the idea for that came came because we just released the book Lord Diary last last fall, and it felt like. You know, when we when I was writing that song, of course, the Lord Irie wasn't even out yet. So it was like in the process of, of finalizing the book. And so I all these memories were fresh in my head. I thought, hmm, it would be kind of cool for this album to have something to, that wraps up the whole thing. So I think, OK, it should be like end credits or something like that. And then I had that, like, yeah, mm, because this 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 whole album is kind of like cinematic or film themed. So then there's this saying that that when you die, your life flashes before your eyes like a film strip. So all these ideas were combined. And then I thought, oh, I should write my own funeral song. That's what I should, my legacy or my, my final farewell and bye-bye, you know. So, and it was really easy because, you know, I already knew that I, you know, it's like, okay, Mostly it's just things from my childhood and thinking about that what if I would die now, what would I remember? What would be the, the what would be the scenes what, uh, that, that I would want to be in my last film strip that I would see? Those would be the shots. Yeah. yeah. So it is personal, but then again, it's I mean, yeah, it, it is a well, it's my life story so far. Best of. <laughs> and and yeah. there's no and in the lyrics there is no Eurovision trip there at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, is that for you if you look back to it all? Is it just like a tiny thing that happened or yeah. yeah. And people I mean I understand why today I'm having the you know Helsinki promotional day, the Finland promoting. Uh, I don't think I've done a single interview today where the subject of Eurovision wouldn't have been touched. No, no, no. I did one. I think I did one, but everything else. You, and especially Eurovision is coming, you know, soon in a few months. So, of course, it is like, yeah. But 
for the past few weeks, I've been doing hundreds of fucking phones, and I'm not kidding. I'm I've done like uh, at least like two hundred or something phones yeah. since January or something. And I would say that out of those, let's say let's say a hundred interviews, the the Eurovision had has maybe come up in six or okay. seven. So it's not that big of a it's not that yeah. big of a deal for anybody fucking outside Finland, but in Finland it's like oh Eurovision, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. yeah. Yeah, to be fair, I wouldn't have asked you anything about it if it wouldn't have come up in the conversation like this. Yeah, but... and I, I so it's my own own mistake. So my I own fault. <laughs> yeah. So, um. Anyway, you also have a tour coming up with Sabaton and Baby Metal, which are actually three totally different bands. But how are you looking forward to it in general? Oh, I'm looking looking forward. It's gonna be easy tour. Very easy tour for 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 me and for us. I mean, we we are opening the night so it, that means that i'm uh, i'm out of my makeup i get to go to shower you know really early in the evening already for fuck sakes which is really unusual for me uh we have a sh quite a short set and i know that the the venues are you know big arenas so it's facilities will be good i think it's gonna be a good relaxing tour i think yeah do you when you finish off early and you have to take off your your makeup and such do you actually still maybe get to enjoy the bands or does it take the entire duration of the the concert that you'll be busy taking out mm, well i i don't think i will be able to see baby metal that's for sure that's for sure but maybe i can you know catch sabbath and maybe you know from the halfway but usually i you know the the the, the thing is that when when you're on tour like that you know the the bands have their set sets that they're mm -hmm. doing the same set pretty much every night i remember on us fest i remember what you know being really thrilled about seeing ozzy osborne you know with his band perform every night but i think i did like watch the first five or six shows so there's like okay so then <laughs> i can like, like like after a while you mm -hmm, cool but it's the same so it's kind of like you. I mean, even though you would love some movie, you don't really watch it every day. <laughs> you know, after a while, it gets kind of boring or something. That yeah, yeah. yeah you know, and and uh, I remember that from that tour that the tour was I don't know three weeks on or four weeks on or something, and then all of a sudden, I was in the backstage area with with our then late now late. Bill manager Bill or coin and and we were smoking a cigar and then I heard oh my god he added fucking he he started playing no more tears all of a sudden and and that was the only time he played no more tears on that tour but I was like there like 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 half a kilometer away and ah fuck it no I'm it yeah yeah I mean but usually on tour I don't really I wouldn't go to see the other but I don't have time and maybe yeah. maybe first first nights or whatever in that sense have you I know it's very difficult to to change sets during during tours, basically. But is that something you've ever tried to play songs, you know, in different cities or something? Oh, we've done we don't we did that now on the on the last tour last fall. We did that. We had a different opening track for every night. Well, not for every night because we were touring for ten weeks, but we had like 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 three or four different sets basically. So so the so the so the starting song. The opening 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 uh, song of the set was every night different, so we were changing that, and also a little bit of the order. We, uh, when it was getting closer to Christmas, we added "Merry Blah Blah Blah" our Christmas song, and then we dropped something else out. So, so yeah, we 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 actually do that. Well, of course, you have to know a lot more songs then. Yeah, so of course. Something you will do this tour as well, or is there not? No, not for the Sabaton one. No, 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 no. So it's gonna be a set. It, it's gonna the set is gonna be set well anyway i think those were my questions for you do you have any last thoughts you want to share with your fans uh hope you like it <laughs> we did our best we tried our hardest not to suck so i hope you like this album i like it i think that's it's our best album until the next one comes those are my those are my greetings